we have to understand the first the classification of critical delays. The cases where the contractor is entitled for EOT, prolongation cost, any of them or both of them. We have three categories of the critical delays. The first category is the ECD. It is excusable and compensable. And whenever we refer to the term excusable, we are it's related to time. So it's time related. So excusable often uh, related with the extension of time claims. For compensable, we often relate to cost. So when I say it's ECD executable and compensable, so there is an EOT entitlement and there is a prolongation cost entitlement as well. The contractor should be reimbursed for the additional costs because of the time losses. The second category is the NND. It is non-executable, non-compensable. So in this case, there is no EOT, there is no there is no prolongation cost to claim because it is contractors owned. It is the contractor's default. And um, it's a still a critical delay because the project you know, is in delay and it's a critical delay, but so it has to be put in this category. It's called NND. And the last category is END. It's ex executable non-compensable. So there is an EOT entitlement, but there is no prolongation cost. And in this case is, say for example, the contractor submitted an extension of time in amount of three months, plus 10 days of four, it's caused by force measures, for example, force measure, act of God, this type of delays. So say for example, 10 days because of uh, adverse weather, for example, you know, it's snowing or something like that. So in this case, it is this additional 10 days are not caused by the employer, it's force measures. It's beyond the employer's control. So in this case, the contractor is reimbursed. It has entitlement of 10 additional days, but there is no cost entitlement. The employer should not reimburse the contractor for these additional 10 days.